I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for coming. You know, all of our partners, and uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, from the education committee uh, to visit with you. You know, and share uh, part of the dream okay, because that's what this is about. Uh, I'm Representative Kevin Coach Christie from Hartford. Um, been involved in education a while. <laughs> I started uh, coaching back in 1980, uh, went into teaching, and was a principal, superintendent, certified, all kinds of fun stuff. But anyways, uh, it's all been about kids, you know, and it's all been about our state and trying to help uh, move it forward. Uh, I spent uh, six years? Yeah, six years on education. Uh, in this committee, so I, I have a lot of uh, strong feelings about <laughs> your work, <laughs> or I should say our work. Uh, and uh, let's see, I think Coop was the only one here. Were you, were you on? No, correct. So I think I think Coop and I uh, had that long relationship here back in that day. So to get to the bill, um, the the lead. Uh, coalition uh, sponsor. There is a coalition of folks uh, who are looking at moving this bill forward. Uh, and the lead is uh, behind uh, Representative Kukli, uh, Amanda Garces. Uh, and the thinking, you know, behind this, you know, is looking at ethnic and social education in schools. And, and when we talk about that, you, you know, you'd say, well, don't we kind of do that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, no, we don't. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll say that on a quick um, I've asked the question of folks, what happened in 1921? in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And 99% of the time, people can't answer that question. Yet, it was one of the most uh, devastating actions that occurred in our country's history. 300 people of color were killed during a riot in Tulsa where community members, white supremacists, and Klansmen physically, in planes, bombed that black community. At the time, it was considered Black Wall Street. And if you get a chance to look at a colorized video uh, of that, particular community, you know, it, it was vibrant, you know, it, it was an exciting piece, you know, of the great migration, you know, from the South, but it was upsetting to a lot of Americans to see people of color making progress. So when you think about those kinds of pieces of our historical background as a country. And you know, as, as you look you know, into research, you'll see that you know, with indigenous people. You know, you'll see it with other uh, ethnic groups that have come in. And so when you think about the history piece, you know, and it's not just a shock you know, and awe of it. You know, on a on a kind of a cool piece, I, w I was in Denver and uh, visiting uh, one of my nephews, and it was really cool. I picked up this little brochure, and I didn't realize this myself, but a third of all of the cowboys were Afro-American. A third. I didn't know that, did you know that? Okay. 
I mean, those are those pieces. You know, if you think about those kinds of things and introducing those things in the curriculum in any form, and then look at the effect it can have socially on the climate of the building. You know, I, I, I know from teaching, you know, different classes uh, and doing different workshops that it's just fascinating to watch the change of people's affect, even. So when you have this opportunity to work with the most uh, vibrant minds, being our, our children, and if we're not giving them everything, or as much of everything as we can, we're doing them a disservice. And we're doing ourselves a disservice. And so that, that whole thing about climate, people say, you know, <laughs> it, it's funny. I, I, I do a lot of little things, too. And, uh, I drive spare school bus. You know, people say, what are you doing that? Well, I have a CDL. Why wouldn't I? But um, the fun part is engaging with the kids. You know, and I don't have discipline problems. You know, I didn't have discipline problems in my classroom. I didn't have any in my school. It's about climate. And how we create a better climate sometimes is how we introduce and how we uh, create an atmosphere within a building within a system that creates that environment. And so what this bill is about is helping us, you know, as a state, you know, move the needle, you know, on making sure that our children understand what's going before us. So that's kind of the, the tone of it. Um, you know, I guess, let's see, next. Sure. Mr. Dillon. Sure. <laughs> uh, State Representative Dillon Gian Batista. Uh, I didn't think I'd be in the hot seat in the first days of the session here in my own committee, uh, but here I am. And I, I'm happy to be here to speak uh, about H3, uh, why I've sponsored the bill, and why I'm working with a group of representatives, but also stakeholders from across the state who have brought this issue to the forefront. Um, we have a relatively new committee, so. Uh, Assuming it pleases the sponsors, I'm going to give you a little bit of the background here so you know what we're talking about. Uh, this was a bill that was introduced in the previous biennium. I believe it was House Bill 794. These numbers don't stick with me, but I think it was. Um, and we, we took a significant testimony as the Education Committee on the proposal. Now, we looked at it um, and explored some of the feedback we were getting from stakeholders from across the state, uh, from our Agency of Education, educators, stakeholder groups who work in the field of education as well. Um, last year was a very complicated year. We ended up having a Senate bill come across from the Senate into which we put provisions um, that are contained now in H3. We attach them to the Senate bill. So the House amended Senate Bill 257 during the 2018 session which has the provisions you now see before you in the form of H3. And the reason that these provisions are coming before you again in 2019 is because Senate Bill 257 did not succeed last session. It was an omnibus package of uh, proposals, and we ran out of time. It was a tough year. We ran out of time in the legislature. Um, what the bill does, to give you a little bit of background, is it sets up a process here in which a 17-member working group would be formed, composed of various education stakeholders, and uh, it's eight members who will be appointed by this coalition of groups and individuals who have brought to us um, the idea that we do, in fact, need to evaluate uh, how we teach the human experience of all citizens in this country the lived experience of individuals who historically have not been represented um, in our, at times, textbooks, oftentimes marginalized from our history. And we, in creating a working group, set up a process for certain uh, research to be done and for reports to be provided to the General Assembly and to the State Board of Education to begin this important work. 
Um, to take it back a little bit, I'm not going to walk you through page by page. I think uh, we'll hear from our drafters shortly on that in Legislative Council. Uh, but to give you the landscape here, the State Board of Education, which we've heard a little bit about in the first days of session, um, is the body that adopts standards for the courses of study in Vermont. It's the State Board of Education. And we should at some point hear from the agency about how that process works, um, because it's, it's really important to understand that relationship. We also know that in Vermont we have a local control education delivery system. When it comes to curriculum, a lot of decisions are made locally about what curriculum looks like. So understanding that nuance is going to be an important part of the discussion as we look into what this bill proposes to do. Now the bill itself has some findings at the front end, and one of the findings I just want to draw attention to, and one of the reasons that we're here today, is Act 54 of 2017. Uh, that set up a report requirement where the Attorney General and the Human Rights Task Force uh, provided some recommendations about what's going on in our state mm -hmm. with regard to the experiences of people of different races, different ethnic groups, and different social groups. Um, as we get into the bill with our drafter, you'll see that ethnic group is defined. You'll see that social group has been defined. And ethnic studies is defined as well. And it's important to know what we're talking about here. When we hear the word ethnic studies, this has been said a lot since the bill was introduced last biennium, we're talking about the K-12 instruction of historical contributions and perspectives of ethnic and social groups, which again, I would draw your attention to the bill when we do walk through ethnic group and social group. <coughs> um, this 17 member working group that I talked about uh, would meet. There are members that would be appointed by the coalition, which I've already said. It would meet from at the very latest, September 1st of 2019 is proposed in H3 through July 1st of 2022, and we'll want to dig into that a little bit. There is money appropriated, or at least put into the bill, for the per diem costs of getting members who want to serve on this working group. That's a standard procedure. It would involve um, our appropriations liaison going upstairs and explaining to the appropriations committee why the money needs to be appropriated and what the work is going toward. It's an appropriation in the amount of $13,420. We can talk about that as we get going. Um, there would be reports. There are three reports described in the bill. March 1st, 2020, a report to the General Assembly, and we'll go through that with our drafter. A second report on December 15th of 2020. Again, we would get some information as we go. And finally, on July 1st, 2022, there would be a report to the General Assembly. Uh, the bill also adds a reporting requirement on hazing and harassment of as defined ethnic groups and social groups um, so that we're getting information about what is going on in our schools and the experience of our students and our learners. Um, there is very little I can say to you here to describe the experience of individuals who have been harassed, who have been marginalized, who have not had historical representation in much of the history that we see, that we understand, that we acknowledge. No one, and I'm willing to put a bet that not even former Senator Brannigan loves American history more than me. <laughs> I learned to read reading American history after I dropped out of high school, and it changed my life. But I've always realized that there are pieces of history that go untold. And I think it's incumbent if we want to educate our students and prepare them for the world that we live in in the 21st century, <coughs> that we ensure that the information they receive includes everyone, all of us. And this bill is a first step. So I look forward to working with the committee as we get started and um, turn it over here to Representative Gonzalez. So for the record, Representative Gonzalez, Deanna Gonzalez from Winooski, and um, this, uh, this bill is very exciting to me in lots of ways. Uh, I uh, have a degree in ethnic studies, um, and I was a social studies teacher. Uh, so um, uh, thinking about the good work that is being done in Vermont and the holes that are currently in Vermont uh, around uh, what the amazing accomplishments and success of Vermonters and of Americans that get missed um, in different places. So I also represent Winooski, um, which uh, has more students of color than white students in our K through 12. And, um, and so I'm able to see 
the, the uh, very inventive ways that our local responsive schools are able to attend to student needs and the really big challenges there are when that's done in isolation and when we don't have uh, the, the larger support and larger connections across the state to be able to do things. I also am finishing a degree in education, um, a doctorate degree in education, and so uh, in that, looking at the myriad of uh, resources that we have at the national level. So there are a ton of different resources available about uh, different curriculum, different ways to approach things that that individual schools, and individual teachers are already able to use, and that a, a working group could pull from and look at. So the Anti-Defamation League, um, which I, I know comes to Vermont um, and does workshops for folks, Southern Poverty Law Center, um, Rethinking Schools Council, but these are just a few uh, national organizations that already have a lot of, that already have done a lot of work that we could rely on to pick up. I also want to um, make sure folks know that when there's been research done on ethnic studies curriculum in K through 12, we see that it has these positive ripple effects for all, all across the school. So um, Representative John Batista was talking about uh, part of the bill has um, bullying rates. So we know that most instances of bullying are around uh, protected classes in some way. Um, and that, um, and we also know that when students of whatever background are taught about the um, historical and present contributions of different groups, then they are less likely to pick on other people. They are less likely to try to attack someone because they know that that group has benefited um, us as a whole collective. We also know that dropout ra rates are significantly reduced for the populations of folks that are um, that are, are lifted up in a way that they haven't before. So Arizona uh, has had Mexican American studies since the 1970s, and uh, schools that were consistently implemented those had, uh, their dropout rates were so radically different and their long-term success rates were so radically different for Mexican American students than the schools that didn't have that. And so we can see that the, the long-term and short-term effects uh, are, are really through, throughout that. Um, Another piece that I just want to kind of also wrap in that sometimes we forget when we're talking about this is that students that come from poverty also are not always represented in our curriculum. So we um, can gloss over the um, historical poverty that uh, individuals and groups are able to overcome. And, um, and so that's, that's one piece kind of in, in the way. Uh, and uh, another small thing also, on, not small thing at all, but just looking specifically at indigenous studies and that um, when uh, in indigenous Americans uh, are taught indigenous studies, their suicide rates go down. Um, so it's also, um, uh, I think that's a, a pretty big outcome um, <laughs> that we're, we're looking for. Um, so uh, that, and, and, uh, and really and reiterating what, um, what has been said already, but in terms of that this working group is, uh, is, is positioned in the bell to look at what, at what is currently happening, how to enhance that and connect that, and see what is possible. So the, the bill is not, um, is not a top down in any way, but instead, how is it that we can enhance and connect and support the good work that is happening? Thank you. And Madam Chair, if we may, um, thinking about and uh, what Representative Gonzalez was just uh, speaking of. And I'd like to say, as has been said, there's a lot of good things going on in our state. So one of those other things that we would hope would come out of this working group is best practice. You know, so taking the resources that have been noted and the relationships that have been noted within our educational community and looking at those schools and teachers that are already on the cutting edge and giving them even more tools to do this work is one of those hope expected and hopeful outcomes you know of the working group uh, 
and looking at all of those protected classes. Uh, and and, and it, it is such a myriad of students that we're talking about. You know, it, it's amazing. Uh, but to take them and raise them up uh, is, is what this is all about. Thank you. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, so just being a first generation American, born to a Hispanic mother, I just, I remember like when my mother would come into school with me, and this was, long, you know, a long time ago, and just how I, I really hated when she came into school because she spoke differently, you know, she had this strong accent, she dressed differently. Um, so I just had that experience of growing up uh, with a mother from another country another culture um, as well. So it, I'm really glad you're doing this. This is excellent. And um, I was just thinking, um, for me as a teacher, um, one of the things I think in Vermont that children are denied are the um, kind of the art piece of ethnicity, mm -hmm. the writers, the musicians, the artists. Um, and I could just see how, e not easily, but you know, it would be really fun as a teacher, I think, to research, you know, who are the, you know, who are the writers, how does that tie into my curriculum, who, you know, who are the musicians? I mean, to think that a lot of American kids, the five Vermont kids, you know, aren't hearing like someone like Piazzolla or reading someone like La Gallosa or Marquez or Garcia, you know, great writers, um, and not seeing their art. So I'm very excited about this. I, I think it, uh, it not only will help the population we're talking about, but it will certainly enrich and expand, you know, the you know the awareness of all all children. Well, well, these kinds of things, as you know, as an educator, spark us, spark us all. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, uh, talking to uh, a woman who's an art teacher, and she was sh sharing her experience because she she taught in Hardwood for a while and you know then in Hartford uh, and, and now she's uh, been doing just uh, she's semi retired. But she was talking about the excitement of being able to share as an artist, you know, all of, because she started to do even re research on her own, even though she's not, you know, in the classroom full time. You know, because it you know it, it roused her curiosity. And she, she's just so excited about what's there and the opportunities that children can have, you know, as a result of looking at this broader umbrella yeah. of our culture. Yeah. Thank you. I will say I started reading Jill Lepore's book, These Truths, I don't know if you've seen that, it's an 800 page poem. It's really looking at American history. Mm -hmm. um, there, the, that I was unaware of is, is really um, disturbing. You had in one court in New York, they're arguing for human rights against England. <laughs> and then down the road, and they were speaking for, for human rights in this court, which everybody understood. And meanwhile, there's another court where people are, uh, the African Americans are fighting for the same thing, and it wasn't happening. I never saw that. So I, I did go to school at the turn of. <laughs> Thank you. We are going to hear from uh, Lech Kelly, who's going to present this. Do I understand that this may not be the, the, the form that you wanted, the current H3? No. Um, the one distinction here uh, is that beyond Senate Bill 257, which passed the House, so we call that Senate 257 as amended, when the session concluded, and then a special session was called, there was another bill introduced by um, three members of the Education Committee at that time. That bill was House Bill 14. So you can find it on the legislative website in the 2018 special session, there is a House Bill 14, which incorporated some of the discussions that conferees in a conference committee had looked at relative to the proposal that is now before you. So there is another uh, point of discussion there about what that 
H14 of the special session look like? And I'm sure this committee will look at that and compare it with this and work with legislative council to understand those changes in full. Um, but that's a point of discussion, and I've heard some conversation with the other chamber about that bill as well. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, this is a nice change for our committee to actually be working on something that we have something to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm looking at a meeting with my son at Townport tonight, um, and we will be looking at plans to move forward. Well, thank you all uh, for your support. Uh, you know, like, like Madam Chair said, this is one of those opportunities that we as legislators don't always have, you know, where we can really make a super impact, you know, on, what, 87,000 kids? They, was the last count? You know, we're in that range. You know, give or take a couple of kids, you know. But, but it's, in, it's in that range. That's, that's a lot of folks let alone their parents, too, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's an uptick. You know, kids bring some cool things home, you know, and hopefully we can add to the cool things they bring home. So thank you. 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 <laughs> so, what's your favorite era in American history? I'm interested as well. Yeah. I'm very interested because yeah. I, 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 I will I mean, pick up on that map. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty bold statement. Trust me. And not everyone is a Martin Van Buren. Really? <laughs> but that's another story. And it was a cover up. So, so you like 19th century political. No, I mean, I like it. It's all yeah, really fascinating. They're hiding in one of our desks. Oh, well, he appears from time to time. He probably was removed in the mold remediation. Okay. I think you can point. Jim, you're going to go through the bill? I will. Um, I'm going to figure out how to get back up again. <laughs> For the record, uh, Jim Damore with Ledge Council. We are walking through uh, H3, uh, which is um, uh, an act uh, dealing with ethnic and social education in schools. So to go through the purpose of the bill first, um, the bill proposes to create the Ethic and Social Equity Standards Advisory Working Group to advise the State Board of Education on the adoption of ethnic and social equity studies standards into statewide educational standards. It also proposes to require the State Board of Education to publish, to the extent consistent with state and federal privacy laws and regulations, data on student performance in hazing, harassment, or bullying incidents disaggregated by student groups, inclu including ethnic and racial groups, poverty status, disability status, English language learner status and gender. The bill uh, starts with a number of findings, and I won't go through them all. Um, Rep. Jim Batista highlighted uh, one of the very significant findings, but just to take you through a few of them. So in 1999, there was a report uh, that was published, um, and the key findings in that report, um, I'm on line nine here, is that racial, uh, racial harassment appeared pervasive in and around the state's public schools, 
and observed that the elimination of this harassment was not a priority among school administrators, school boards, elected officials, and state agencies charged with civil rights enforcement. That's 1999. In 2003, there was a follow-up report, and uh, that found that the problem persisted. And one of the many, pro many problems highlighted was curriculum issues in the state's public schools. In some instances, teachers employ curriculum materials and lesson plans that promote racial stereotypes. Uh, and one of the conclusions was that there was a need for a bias-free curriculum. Then in December of 2017, as Rep. Jim Patisa mentioned, Act 54, uh, there was a report and that report uh, found that uh, education is one of the five state systems in which racial disparities persist and need to be addressed. Um, and it went on to say that one of the main suggestions for accomplishing this was to teach children from an integrated curriculum that fairly represents both the contributions of people of color as well as indigenous people, women, people with disabilities, etc while fairly and accurately representing our history of oppression of these groups. And then lastly, there's a finding, finding number four on line 17, that says the harassment of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, and non-binary communities, other students of color, and students with disabilities and lack of understanding of people and power about the magnitude of the systemic impacts of harassment and bias damaged the whole community. Okay, okay. so then the next part of the bill goes into definitions. In this mentioned there is a definition of ethnic groups, of social groups, and ethnic studies. So let's start with ethnic studies, uh, line five. Uh, means the instruction of students in pre-K through grade 12 in the historical contributions or perspectives of ethnic groups and social groups. Uh, the definition of ethnic groups is just above. It says uh, it means non-dominant racial and ethnic groups in the United States, including people who are indigenous and people of African, Asian, Pacific Island, uh, Taconix, uh, Latinx, or Middle Eastern descent. And then social groups on line eight is defined as females, people with disabilities, immigrants, refugees, and individuals who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, or non-binary. Okay. Okay, the next section deals with the creation and composition of this advisory group. Uh, so it's, a, it's comp comprised of uh, 17 members Eight members were members of and represent the interests of ethnic groups and social groups. Uh, a Vermont-based college-level faculty expert in ethnic study studies, the Secretary of Education, um, the Executive Director of the Vermont NEA, uh, the an Assistant Attorney General in the Office of the Vermont Attorney General with experience working with the Agency of Education on racial and social justice issues in schools, the executive director of the Vermont School Boards Association, um, a representative of the Vermont Principals Association with expertise in the de development of school curriculum, a represent representative of the Vermont Curriculum Leaders Association, uh, the executive director of the Vermont Superintendents Association, and the executive director of the Vermont Independent School Association or designees. Um, the coalition, um, the Vermont Coalition for Ethnic and Social Equity in Schools um, appoint the eight members who represent ethnic groups and social groups. Um, and then um, the working group uh, is required to represent the breadth of geographic areas within the state and to have the experience in the areas of ethnic standards or studies social, social justice, inclusivity, and act advocacy for the groups they represent. Um, the first meeting is to be called by the Secretary uh, on a report September 1, 2019. 
um, and the group ceases to exist on August 1, uh, sorry, July 1, 2022. So it's a three-year uh, three year, uh, existence for this group. Um, on line 15, the appropriation, as mentioned, is $13,420 um, for fiscal year 2020. And uh, that is based on formula. Basically, it's a per diem uh, calculation and statute that drives that, that figure. And that, that money is paid to the members of the working group who are not otherwise state employees or don't otherwise get paid um, for, for their work on this, on this group. Um, the duties of the working group, um, the first uh, duty is to uh, review statewide curriculum standards adopted by the State Board of Education and on or before June 30, 2021, recommend to the State Board updates and additional standards to recognize fully the, the history, contributions, and perspectives of ethnic groups and social groups. The, rec the recommended additional standards uh, are required to be designed to increase cultural competency of students in pre-K through grade 12, increase attention to the history, contribution, and perspectives of ethnic groups and social groups, promote critical thinking regarding the history, contribution, and perspectives of ethnic groups and social groups, commit the school to eradicating any racial bias in its curriculum, uh, provide across its curriculum content and methods that enable students to explore safely questions of identity, race equality, and racism, and ensure that, that the basic curriculum and extracurricular programs are welcoming to all students and take into account parental concerns about religion or culture. Um, in addition to that, that uh, work on curriculum standards, uh, the second duty of the group is to review all existing state statutes regarding school, school policies and recommend to the General Assembly proposed statutory changes uh, with the following goal, goals. I don't propose to read through all this because it's very similar to what we just went through for the curriculum standards, the same principles in, involved here, and this the show would like me to. Do, I wasn't going to go through all the all this language uh, line by line. It's very similar to what we went through with the goals for the curriculum, but I'm happy to read through it if you like. If you like. Okay, so first task is to look at curriculum standards. Second is to review statutes uh, along these principles. And then line 16, the third is it has to issue a report to the General Assembly um, uh, and um, include in this report any statute, state board rule, or school district policy that has, it has identified as needing review or amendment in order to, and again, there's a long list here of of things to, to be looking at uh, along the same lines we talked about. Um, and then uh, line 19 uh, reports the working group show on or before March 1, 2020, submit a report to the General Assembly that includes uh, the membership of the group, its schedule, its plan for accomplishing the work, um, uh, including the timeline for reviewing all state curriculum standards <coughs> and for its recommendation to the State Board of Additional Standards. Um, it's planned to accomplish the, the, the work, which includes the review of state statutes. The first report coming back to, to you is basically who's on the group, its schedule, and its plan for accomplishing all this, all this, this work it's doing. So no content. Okay. No content, yeah. yeah. And then um, on line 10, uh, there's a second report due. That is uh, on or before December 15, 2020, uh, which includes, again, the membership and its schedule. Now, recommended statutory changes, and so now it's going to back with the recommend, recommendations, uh, and recommendations for training and appropri appropriations to support implementation of the rec recommended statutory changes. And then there's a third report due July 1, 2020, 2022. Uh, which includes any further recommended statutory changes, and again, recommendations for training and appropriate, appropriate, appropriation, sorry, to support implementation of the recommended changes. 
these are all the dates that were in the original bill, or have the dates been updated? They've updated They've for, been updated. Yeah, yeah, before. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, lastly, the section deals with the, the duties of the state board. So, uh, the coalition or the work, sorry, the advisory group is giving them this um, th this recommendation on curriculum. Uh, so, the state board shall, on or before June 30, 22, consider that report. Uh, so, consider adopting ethnic and social equity st uh, study standards into existing statewide curriculum standards for students in pre K through 12 and shall consider the report submitted by the working group when determining the standards to adopt. So this does not mandate the adoption of new standards. It's, um, it's requiring the state board to consider. So the word consider. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the second uh, section of this bill uh, deals with um, the, the duties of the state board, and this has to do with reporting um, on education statewide. And what this report uh, would do, looking at page 12, is it says uh, on line 5, to the extent consistent with state and federal privacy laws and, and regulations, da data on student performance and hazing, harassment, or bullying incidents shall be disaggregated by student groups, including ethnic and racial groups, poverty status, disability status, English, langu English, English la language learner status, and gender. And the effective date is on passage. Executive Director of Racial Equity and the Racial Advisory Panel. I know that's more looking at state government, and this is specifically the schools. But it, of course, would be I would hope that there would be some. Uh, I see that they're not named as one of the um, seventeen, uh, nor any of the. And so I'm just curious what the planned interface or connectivity is. So maybe from from the sponsors. Maybe some students. Are there student organizations? Mm -hmm. Will be helping us with that. They will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it is. It is helpful for us to hear the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was mentioned. Uh, Rep. Batista mentioned H14, which yeah. is the bill that was in the special session, and the two major differences that bill that what you have here uh, is just uh, first that it slimmed down the findings a bit, mm -hmm. uh, and second. It took away the responsibility of the working group, uh, sorry, the advisory group, to uh, review state statutes. Excuse me, to what? It took away the, the responsibility of the working group to review state Excuse statutes. Me, yeah, yeah. I don't know why we did that, but I didn't know why. There's a Senate. There's a Senate. Yeah, it was in the Senate. Yeah. Well, and just that I, just because I was just reading, I believe that that responsibility does lie with the uh, racial advisory council and the executive director. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's part of their uh, responsibility is that review statute. So, 
So I don't know the reason it came out of one of those assignments. So I don't know okay. that speaks to that connection. Ready to take this one up? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes.